So one of the lesser known but really cool charts in Excel is the radar chart. And a radar chart is used to plot three or more quantitative variables on a two-dimensional chart relative to a central point. So it's almost like a line chart that wraps around in a circle and connects to itself. Another way to think about it might be like a bicycle wheel with a number of spokes associated with different dimensions or characteristics. Now each data point would fall somewhere along those spokes where the further out from the center of the wheel indicates more skewness towards that particular characteristic or dimension. Trust me, it'll be easier to explain once we actually have our hands on some data. Some example data sets where you might use radar charts, something like comparing test scores across multiple subjects, looking at sales of different types of vegetables by month, visualizing personality test results across subjects. The idea is to get a quick visual representation of which directions the data skews. So pro tips here, first and foremost, it can be really helpful to normalize each metric onto the same scale, like a zero to one, one to 10, one to 100, could be anything. But normalizing helps to improve readability and create more intuitive, more noticeable comparisons across your data series. That way you don't have one data series completely drowning out the others. Second, just like pies, clustered columns, etc., limit the number of categories that you're looking at. The idea is to minimize noise, maximize impact, so stick with only a handful of categories. With that, let's take a look at some examples. All right, so on the radar chart tab, uh, we've got a few data sets that will help to demonstrate how radar charts can be used. For anyone who studied psychology, you'll probably recognize these big five personality traits openness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, extroversion, and agreeableness. I included some definitions there for anyone who's curious. And what's nice about this data set is we've got pre-normalized uh, nice data set to work with, with three different test respondents, Tim, Katie, and George. So what I can do is select A1 through F4, insert, go into my radar and surface area, go in and pop in a regular radar chart, you can see I can choose an option with markers or a solid fill. I don't really know the point of, of the solid fill. It just kind of overlaps your data, just like an overlapped area chart, and makes things tough to read. So uh, I prefer the standard. Let's do a little bit of formatting on this. I'll get rid of the title. I'm going to right click, format my legend, and just move it to the bottom. And since this is all scaled on 0 to 100, I really don't need the axis itself. So I'll delete that. And last but not least, I'm just going to go into my fill options with the grid lines selected and make these a little bit more noticeable uh, with a solid fill and a little bit of transparency. And there you have it. So one kind of sidebar here, you see how my chart is overlapping this data? Let's say I want to insert some rows and shift this data down. If I try to do that, since the chart overlaps that row, the chart's going to grow as I make those changes. I have the option to change that by going to the Format Options, go all the way to the right to Size and Properties, drill down the Properties options, and see how Move and Size with Cells is selected. That's the default option. I can go ahead and select Don't Move or Size with Cells. And now as I add those rows and press F4 to repeat that process, the chart stays put and doesn't adjust accordingly. So that's actually really helpful if you have charts that are part of dashboards that live on worksheets and you need to adjust column widths or row heights and you don't want to move those charts, you have the sizes and proportions locked in, that's a great little option to keep in mind. So anyway, back to the radar chart. Now let's talk about how to actually read this thing. So in this case we have five different dimensions or characteristics that kind of form this pentagon shape. So the best way to think about it is that a respondent who's extremely balanced, who scores similarly across all five dimensions, will basically create a shape that looks very much like a pentagon. Uh, so Tim is a very balanced individual in this case. He tends to score similarly across all of these different personality traits. On the other hand, you've got Katie here, who skews very much to the left. She scored well higher than either Tim or George in terms of extroversion, agreeableness, and openness. And then you've got a guy like George, who kind of out-indexed everyone on the conscientiousness and neuroticism side. So radar chart, in this case, 
is a really nice way to kind of get a sense for these people's personalities simply by the shape that's created by this chart. So really cool effect, really cool visual tool. So let's scroll down and take a look at our second data set. We've got sales by month for four different crops. We've got carrots, potatoes, apples, and watermelons with 12 months of data. And we've got two versions of this. I'm going to show you the first one and then talk about what this second version means. So this is just volume of sales. If I select that series and insert a radar, I'll just drag it down here. Let's get rid of the title. As you can see, it's a little bit tough to read because potatoes here, there's so much higher volume in terms of sales that they tend to just drown everything else out. So it's really tough to tell what's going on down here with watermelons and carrots because the volumes are just so small. So what I've done here is essentially convert this volume data set into a 0 to 100 scaled data set. And to do that, I used this very fancy, somewhat complicated formula um, that I just applied to this entire range. If you're interested in learning more about how this formula works, go ahead and shoot me a message. But essentially, it allows you to convert any range of values into any new scale that you choose. So in this case, my new minimum value is 1, and my new maximum value is 99 plus 1, or 100. So if I wanted a 1 to 1,000 scale, I could change this to 999 and apply this over. And there you go. It's the same relative values, just scaled to a new max and min. So I'll undo that and just make it 99 again. And now if I select this entire array, from A27 through M31, and insert another radar chart. Now if I just drag this next to our original chart, delete the title, as you can see, we see a much, much clearer picture of relative trends between these four crops. Watermelons uh, tend to peak in summer months, June, July, August. You've got apples coming in in September and October during the fall picking season. You've got carrots which sell well in November, December, and again in February, and then potatoes, which really peak in January. Now these aren't actual numbers, these are just my best guess, so all you farmers out there, please don't call me out on this. That gives you a good sense of the importance of when and why to use a rescaled or a normalized data range, especially when you're looking at something like a radar chart. Um, so there you go, radar charts in Excel, really cool tool.